bits of the chandelier started falling down and then the chandeliers like smashed like all of a sudden at the end of the little runway movie and I'm like oh wow is that not like a statement or what but hey guys welcome to my channel I'm Jess if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel I'm getting desperate I need to grow my channel so bad and I need your help so all your support would be amazing. I today I'm going to review the Celine 20 2025 Spring Summer Runway Collection. Now I don't believe this show is like a traditional runway show. I know the last few seasons Eddie hasn't been doing the typical fashion shows where all the celebrities are there and people in the front row and all that. It's filmed in more of like a mo short movie kind of style which I think is quite cool and I think he's trying to steer away from a traditional runway show. Either that or Selena trying to save money, I do not know. It's very expensive to get these celebrities in and pay these influences and all that, but who's to say it could be just an artistic uh, statement as well. Eddie has now left Celine, so he is no longer the artistic director and Michael Ryder was appointed the new designer. So we will see uh, maybe I don't know, in the next few seasons, it could be still some of Eddie's designs, but Michael Wright has come in as the new designer and perhaps Celine is going to change again. But, you know, the Phoebe Philo era of Celine was very uh, close to a lot of people's hearts. And then when, when Eddie came into Celine, he did change it up. He bought in that like whole skinny jeans look, the motorcycle jackets, the teddy bombers, which I personally love. I loved that from Celeron as well, what he did. The biker boots, the rock and roll you know, heroin chic look a little bit. I, I, to be honest, I quite like it. Um, and then th this recent runway show, I must say, I also love it. It is a nod to the 60s. Just, oh, some of the clothes were beautiful. The bag shapes were something that we haven't really appreciated in a while as well. So now that Eddie has gone from Celine, it'll be interesting to see how the brand goes. I know that he bought a lot of it bags to Celine as well, like the Triumph and the, the Triumph logo and then, you know, that whole line, even the 16 bag was quite popular. So let's see, guys. But Celine, yes, this runway show, let's talk about it. Now, there is some rumours that Eddie may be going to Chanel as well, and I th understand why one might speculate that, because if you look at his last few runway shows there was a little bit of a nod to Chanel throughout them all and it was kind of like he was like auditioning to be the new designer of Chanel and I did predict guys like a few months ago Eddie was gonna go to Chanel but now there's rumors that it could be Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen it could be Jean Galliano so we don't know guys we don't know if he's going to Chanel we don't know if Eddie is just going to create his own label because he seems to bring the same kind of aesthetic to multiple brands but let's get on to the runway show. Let's talk about the clothes. Let's talk about the bags. So there was this houndstooth set look, which I screenshotted because I'm pretty sure these pictures aren't on Vogue Runway. And sorry about the, the crappy screenshots, but this is all I could kind of get. So a houndstooth set with those long necklaces. As I said, I felt like the whole um, era of this collection was very 60s. So this set, it does remind me of Chanel, I think the Houndstooth. I mean, even if you look at uh, Karl Lagerfeld's last winter collection, it was very heavy on the Houndstooth. It's just, I don't know if that derives from Chanel, to be honest. I think it's just a classic print, but it is, you know, it does give me that vibe, especially with those long necklaces, very Coco Chanel. Bags. Now, what I found really refreshing in this collection is that he's taken inspiration from 60s style bags, which is a trend that we haven't seen in a really long time. You know, I was watching on YouTube like videos from the 50s and the 60s, just old people in the streets, and I noticed that a lot of ladies wore these like top handle purse bags. And it's very different to like what ladies wear these days. These days we're wearing like, you know, the Chanel flat bags or we're wearing like, you know, kind of bowling bags or dome shaped bags, um, top handle bags with a strap, a crossbody. But they used to like ladies used to wear like these little top handle purses all the time. And this particular bag, I can't qu quite tell exactly the details of it, but it's a simple black rectangle bag. It actually reminds me a little bit. I used to have a vintage Hermes Pelonia bag from the 1960s, which I sold this year, which would have been great if I kept it as an example. But that bag was a similar kind of vibe. It was this like rectangular bag with a long handle. And this shape, it is very much that. It's that 1960s silhouette. And I think it's interesting that he's bringing that back. And there's also the Kiss Lock purse, which is very 1950s, 1960s purse style. It's 
like yeah it's like an old lady's purse but i i love this shape of bag i think it is so cute and the fact that he's done it as well in like a brown crocodile it's very uh vintage looking so there's that and then what i found also interesting notice this like mock croc skirt i know that celerot was very famous for this mock croc look um and he kind of made like fake exotic cool back then it was kind of not a thing and Celerot did make that a thing as well as wearing leopard print I know that Celerot made that a trend as well whereas leopard print used to be associated more with like street walkers or promiscuous women but he made it like fashionable and classy so I did notice like him Eddie referencing parts from like the Celerot archive which I don't know whether that's just like his influence from working at Celeron, he's carried that over to Celine or what but I did notice like people were saying there's a lot of Chanel in this runway show but I saw like a heavy influence of Celeron as well but perhaps he's just influenced by in general like 1960s 1970s fashion there's like there's a few eras in it to be honest um uh, then again this little sorry about the screenshot guys but this little east west bag with the mock croc in this dark red color which has been very trending this season across a lot of brands now this was very chanel i would say this like sequin set but then he's mixed it with the faux python which is an interesting like juxtaposition with the long pearl chains which is very chanel and the little 60s style purse so he's made he's he, it's, a, it's a classic with a twist right he's like borrowing elements from a few different um like classic designs then the mini skirt looks now mini dresses were popularized by a designer in the 1960s called mary quant i believe so i do see elements of that idea as well coming back it's it's very heavy on like it reminds me of like twiggy uh yeah that kind of style especially the handbags are very yeah retro looking even this little black one with the top handle one could say like you know you might see that in a like a retro inspired store or something or yeah it just it doesn't look like a modern day bag it definitely has a like a throwback look to it like a a little lady bag um with the top handle in the black with the gold hardware and what was very interesting is that he hasn't used his um triumph logo or any kind of branding it's very subtle and it's very um i one might say quite luxury but yeah then these big thick headbands with the sunglasses quite a cool look as well um again with the uh kind of matching set with the um the four pocket jacket also very chanel but then the scarf yeah that was kind of like something that women wore a lot in the 50s and the 60s i believe as well correct me if i'm wrong uh a lot of women wore like uh neck scarves uh perhaps from hermes or something as well now this look now that he showed like women in tuxedos which is very celeron like the la, uh, la smoking suit is a very iconic look from celeron and this is i feel like heavily inspired by the la smoking suit like it's very obvious so that was interesting that he's referencing that um in this fashion show and then again he's paired it with that retro looking bag these like the dresses with the neckline like this and then the kind of baby doll style for some reason it, it reminds me of like audrey hepburn and twiggy combined and i i kind of looked up like who invented the baby doll dress because i know that celerot was famous for the trapeze dress but these like dresses that kind of have like a bodice here and flare out i don't know who did that i think it could have been balenciaga because i and i know that audrey hepburn also wore a lot of givenchy back in the day but i guess it's just like a very classic 1960s look that baby doll dress and i did see that quite a lot in this runway i also liked like the element of like the sheep with the bow i thought that was so cute um now this black ensemble with the chains in the gold hardware this is like very very chanel um i mean i can imagine coco chanel herself in this but i guess what makes it more extra is those sequins all over it um uh, which give it a little bit more of that like party girl look i suppose yeah one could say it's 1920s as well with all the sequins but yeah another matching kind of uh suit dress thing with the long pearl necklace very chanel um loved this dress with like the capelet 
Um, and then that big neckline, that is gorgeous. Like, oh, th this is stunning. Um, anyways, <laughs> then these like little tuxedo dresses, short little dress. This is very Chanel as well, right? Like little black dress, is it not, right? And then the little black top handle purse with the gold hardware. Yeah, it's a very, it looks very Chanel to me, especially with the white cuffs. I mean, Karl Lagerfeld always wore like these white shirts with the like little necktie. And you know, Eddie was good friends with Karl. Did also notice a more commercial bag with the Triumph logo in the patent leather. And actually I know that uh, during the 1960s as well, um, Mary Quant was uh, famous for using PVC in clothing for the first time. So I know that PVC elements or like patent leather was very popular in the 60s as well. And uh, you can see in these bags, there's a bit of a shine to some of them. And even in the, the Louis Vuitton runway show, the one I reviewed the other day, there was a little bit of like shiny leather uh, throughout the show. I've seen it across a few runway shows now. They're using patent leather a lot more. And they're going back to that 50s and 60s uh, silhou like bag silhouettes. Like even in the Coach runway show, guys, you know how they had those kiss lock purses? They're going back to that era, which is something, uh, I guess they haven't done that in a while. So it's making sense why they would reference that. And maybe people are over like the whole Y2K vibe because yeah, I, I must admit I'm kind of over that now. The, uh, everything was stunning. Another white kind of uh, co-ord with the, the pearl necklaces, gorgeous. Um, and I'm not going to review everything from the show. I loved, I love that neckline, like that boat neck. Very Chanel, actually, the boat neck. Like, she was very famous for wearing, like, nautical looks with the boat neck. It's very flattering, actually. So, it is heavily, um, Chanel inspired, but I also saw influence from Celeron. I thought it was beautiful, and I found it so interesting at the end of the movie that, like, Bits of the chandelier started falling down, and then the chandeliers, like, smashed, like, all of a sudden at the end of the little runway movie. And I'm like, oh, wow. Is that not, like, a statement or what? Because it's kind of like, I don't know whether this show was kind of talking about Eddie's journey through fashion or what. Because, as I said, I saw Influence from Celeron, which is somewhere he's worked before, and I saw Influence from Chanel. So is that not saying maybe he's going to Chanel now? Like, is that not giving us some clues as to where his journey is going next? And the fact that the chandeliers smashed all of a sudden after he's left Celine, it's like, you know, he's done. Done. Like, that's done. And he's like, that part of his chapter has been destroyed. Like, it's over. And the thing is, when Eddie does go to Brands, he he changes them like he gives them so many hot items like he's so good at footwear he's so good at handbags he's really strong in outerwear as well and so now that he's left celine it's all like you know he's done same thing happened when he left cello ron you know anthony anthony vaccarello i do think that he's done a lot of cool things at cello ron he bought those like cassandra shoes and you know maybe the nikki bag and there's been a few designs which are like you know quite cool he's brought a bit of like this like sexiness to cello ron but Eddie, like, he has such a cult following, and if he if he goes to Chanel, guys, I think it will be a success. I think it will be a good move as well for Chanel to appoint him the artistic director. Um, I also think it would be interesting if Mary-Kate and Ashley went there. That's just my thoughts. I am so much in anticipation to see where he goes next. Uh, perhaps he'll take a break. Perhaps he'll go to Chanel. Perhaps he'll start his own designer brand. Let me know what you think, guys. But let me know as well. Did you enjoy this show? What do you think of the bags, the clothes? Um, I liked it. I thought it was gorgeous. Lots of um, beautiful pieces. But anyways, thanks for watching my video today. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye!